Is the Scorpion Evo 3 better than the P90? Let's talk about that. What's up guys, this is Ziprax's 12 coming at you with another Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Weapon Review. Today we'll be discussing the differences between the Scorpion EVO 3 and the P90, with the ultimate goal of seeing which one is better than the other. With no mods attached, the P90 has slightly better damage, much better handling, and higher penetration. The Scorpion has slightly better accuracy, better range, and a much higher rate of fire. Noise reduction on both are relatively the same. So let's take a look at the accuracy of both weapons using our favorite targets, cows. The first weapon we'll be using is the Scorpion EVO 3. The first thing I would like to point out is that if you love using iron sights, this is a weapon you are going to be challenged using. The circular design of the rear sight combined with the distance from your point of view creates a fuzzy sight picture for smaller targets, particularly targets that are subdued or dark in color. You will see in some circumstances I'm not able to quickly acquire smaller targets, particularly ones that are dark in color. Aside from the issue with the iron sights, the weapon is extremely stable, barely moving with single shots up to three round bursts. Accuracy is very good, even with the weapon firing multiple rounds, I'm able to land every round that is fired on the target. Now that we've taken a look at the Scorpion, let's take a look at the P90. Again with the P90, we come across the same reticule design of the rear sight. Although with the P90, the sight picture is much better for small, subdued, or dark targets, due to the field of view being further up on the weapon. The targets don't seem to blur into the sight itself. Like the Scorpion, the P90 is really stable, barely moving when firing single shots or small 2-3 to three round bursts. The P90 is also extremely accurate, even past its optimal range. Every shot lands exactly where I'm aiming. So now that we've taken a look at how both weapons perform using single shots or short bursts, let's take a look at burst firing the weapon in a sustained burst. Firing a sustained burst with the Scorpion causes a lot of sway with the weapon. The recoil is extremely pronounced, so much so that the target can no longer be seen while the weapon vigorously jolts back and forth. Firing this weapon at targets greater than 200 meters can cause you to miss the target. However, if you aim low enough, you may be able to take out the target or a small group of targets. The biggest drawback of the Scorpion is the low magazine size. Most of the time, due to the extremely high rate of fire, I'm only able to take down two targets before I'm forced to reload the weapon, which in a combat situation could certainly mean life or death. The P90 on the other hand is the exact opposite. The lower rate of fire on the P90 causes much less sway due to recoil. And not only that, but the targets can still be seen clearly through sustained burst. Due to the default larger magazine size coupled with the lower rate of fire, the P90 is able to take down two to three times more targets per magazine than the Scorpion can. Accuracy through sustained burst is quite high, making the weapon highly suitable for engaging enemies at range. So let's take a look at the recoil pattern for both weapons. The first weapon we will be testing is the Scorpion. The Scorpion's recoil pattern is highly localized, shifting up and to the right while maintaining a solid grouping. Let's have a look at the P90 and compare the two. The P90's recoil pattern varies heavily, but primarily has a shift upwards and to the right. The slower rate of fire is the cause for the drastic shift in the weapon. Compared side by side, the first 10 or so rounds of both weapons have the same characteristics. Now let's outfit both weapons with the same mods and see how that changes the weapon characteristics. We will be outfitting each weapon with the stock buttstock, a Comp M4 reflex optical sight, we'll leave the trigger mechanism as stock, take an extended magazine if it's available, a laser 3 dot, and a version 1 compensator. A side by side comparison of each weapon as they are being upgraded shows that the P90 has slightly better damage, better accuracy, better handling, and higher penetration than that of the Scorpion. The Scorpion previously had better accuracy and range over that of the P90. Let's look at that recoil again. 
The Scorpion now shows the same zigzag pattern that the P90 had, with groupings at the beginning and end of the cycle. The recoil pattern is still predominantly up and to the right, but starts with the left shift. Looking at the recoil pattern of the P90, it's still the same zigzag pattern as before, alternating between the left and the right. The recoil pattern now is a bit more concise, having a gentler shift predominantly up and to the right. In a side-by-side -side comparison, both weapons have the exact same recoil, starting with the left shift and moving to the right. So let's take these weapons onto the battlefield and see how they perform in a real-world scenario. The only change we're going to make to both weapons is removing the compensator and adding a suppressor. We'll be using the Scorpion first in a small unit add base in the starting area. Even at range, the Scorpion is still viable to snipe targets outside its optimal range. Or perhaps not. Due to the increased mag size, some tactical maneuvers that were previously impossible are now possible. With a lower capacity magazine, that enemy may have survived and might have been able to gun me down. That's the end of the run. Let's take a look at the P90. Just like the Scorpion, even at range, the P90 is still viable to snipe targets outside its optimal range. However, just like with the Scorpion, this is not the intended purpose of the weapon and should only be used as a last resort due to the inconsistent nature of the weapon. This situation illustrates just that. However, sometimes miracles do happen. With the P90, I'm having to do far less reloading, thereby increasing its combat efficiency. Being too cocky and complacent, I actually go down right here and have to wait for my team to revive me. Let's go ahead and speed this up.
that's the end of the run. Let's take a look at the vehicle damage of both weapons. In one magazine, the Scorpion is quite capable of taking down a vehicle with a full magazine. Like the Scorpion, the P90 is also able to take down a vehicle in one full magazine. So let's see exactly how many shots it takes to take down a vehicle. If you take a look at the ammo pool in the lower left hand corner, there are two rounds left in the magazine. This means it took a total of 28 rounds to destroy the vehicle. Time for the P90. Again, if you look at the ammo pool in the lower left hand corner once this test is complete, there are 28 rounds left in the magazine. The P90 is able to take down a vehicle in 22 rounds. With a 50 round magazine, this effectively means you can take down two vehicles, providing you have good accuracy and do not miss or waste more than six shots. So which weapon is better? After modifications, the P90 has all around better stats, a larger magazine pool, and has higher combat effectiveness than that of the Scorpion. Does that mean it's better? While statistically the P90 is a better all-around weapon, the Scorpion has its place in combat scenarios. One of those scenarios is a scenario in which the requirement is a shorter time to kill. But let me know what you think down in the comment section. Also, if there are any weapons that you would like me to review, compare, or test, let me know in the comments as well. Alright folks, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more. And I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye, peeps.